Hey everyone, what is up in today's episode of My Coding School? We're going to go over the Firestore, Firebase Firestore database, um, why we're using Firestore over the real-time database, and how to integrate it into a basic application. So first we're going to go over to our Firebase application. It's the same UI that we set up for authentication. Uh, and if we click Build, we have two different sections over here for Firestore database and then real-time database. Real-time database is more for, it's Firebase's first feature uh, when it first came out, and it's really just to sync data in real time. Like I said, store and sync data in real time. And you could use it as a database, but uh, it's very unstructured. You can think of it as just a big JSON uh, blob of, of key value pairs. Um, and it's great if you have a chat feature, if uh, you put in some text and you want someone on the other side to get it right away. Uh, Firebase real-time database will sync up those two accounts and then you'll be able to get real-time data on, over the line um, without having to do really anything on, on either side. Uh, otherwise, a regular setup, you would have a server and every single time you wanted to update either side, you would have to call that API and manually update it. Uh, the real-time database setup does it automatically within the uh, Firebase SDK. But we're going to get started with Firestore database. It is a little bit more structured. It's still an unstructured database, kind of like MongoDB. We, we don't need a schema to define our tables and our rows. Um, and so it's great to get up and running for the first time. Uh, in the beginning of a new project, your data is changing quite a bit. And so you may add some fields, remove some fields. And it's great that you don't have to update a schema every single time. In the future, that that upside in the beginning becomes a downside in the in the future because we want more structure. Um, but to get a app up and running, this is the perfect option to get started. And even for TrackFi, I got started with Cloud Firestore, um, and then I eventually ripped it out for Realm DB, which we'll do in another video. And that's more based off of MongoDB, and it just makes querying a lot faster, a lot easier, um, a lot less code to do the same type of thing for queries. That being said, we can still do queries in Firestore, but it does become a little limited. If you want to do any complex queries, there's no joining on different tables, um, but we'll get to that later. Uh, in terms of the Firestore database, think of a collection as a table in a database, and then a row would be a document uh, in Firestore. So we could define our user's table or our user's collection here. Um, but we're actually going to prevent from doing that just yet because I want to show you what happens when we don't do anything. Um, so one of the positives, like I said, it's unstructured, so we can start adding information right away. So once we go to our code base, we can see we didn't have to add any new packages. Um, we still have only the Firebase package installed. But the difference is we are importing Firebase slash Firestore before we were doing Firebase slash uh, authentication. And so remember with the new Firebase version nine, we have to specify what methods we wanna have access to, to be able to use in our application. And before, I'll go over to the login page real quick. Before we had this method, we we're importing Firebase and we had this method get auth. And this was defining the auth object within our own application and allowed us to do things like auth, um, we didn't do it just yet, auth.currentuser.userid to find that user that's logged in, and then auth, we would pass it in to be able to create an email and password, and then we'll also have to do the same thing to log in with an email and password, but that's a different video. For Firestore, it's very similar in that we have to define this database object. So we have get Firestore, which is a function, and it returns the database object, which we can then reference in our um, Firestore API calls, whether we're writing to the database or reading to the database. And that being said, let's get started with line number six. We're going to define the database with Git Firestore. Remember, import that from Firebase slash Firestore. So now we can use this when reading, writing, updating documents in our Firestore account. The next thing is this reference object. So remember, a collection, think of it as the database, or sorry, the table. Um, and the table 
is called users. So we want to we want to create a new table called users, and we're passing the database object. So we know what database to reference, or Firebase knows what database to reference. So this is the database, and we want to create a table of users. So this is just a reference object. It's not doing anything just yet until we call read data or get or add data. So then next thing we have is add data. In a typical application, you would have a maybe a, a couple of user input fields for first name, last name, whatever information you want to store in the database. Or even when a user logs in, you want to be able to store them and add some more information to them and associate with them with transactions or whatever it may be. Um, in this scenario, just to keep it simple, we're going to hard code an object. Um, we're going to have a name and a company. So name of Tim and then company of my coding school. With that, we want to add this to our database. And the way we do that is this add doc method. So there's a couple different ways we could add information. Uh, this add doc will create a unique ID and just shove it into the right table that you want. Uh, there's also set doc, which will, if you pass in an ID, it'll overwrite that um, object and then update it or even set it if it doesn't already exist. Uh, and then there's also update doc, but we'll do that in another video after this. For right now, we're just going to do add doc. And then we have to, just like when we read a, read from the database, and then we also create a user, we log in from a user, we have to pass in information uh, of a reference object. So remember, we define this reference object up here. And you might want to clarify what this is. So uh, you could do like user ref which is even more clear. Let's update both of these. And then we're going to call add doc on the user ref, so on the user's table or collection, with this user object that we that we created um, manually here. So we're going to save that. And if we go over to Firestore, let's just make sure nothing is there quite yet. my internet is very slow okay we have nothing there just yet so then we're going to click add data so we didn't get any alerts so that's a good thing um, so if we go over to back to firestore we reload we see the table or collection got created a unique id was added so that's where we add doc comes in with the information we have my coding school name tim um, and we can see like the advantage of developing um, locally is like, let's say we wanted to do last name. Instead of like having to change a whole database scheme in and, uh, and then rewrite over th everything that was in the database, we could just actually click add data again. So now we have one, the original one that we added, and then another one with more information. It's cool to get started, but then also like once you're referencing information that doesn't exist, that's the reason why uh, longer term down the line, we want to add more structure to our data. It's great in the beginning, not so much in, in, the, in a more uh, bigger app that is referencing more columns and, and fields and databases. So right now we got two objects that we just added. Um, and now how do we read those objects? So they're in the database and now we're going to go up to read data. In a normal application, you would want to like, let's say on this page load. So on use effect call read data. Uh, but right now, just to make sure we're actually clicking, make it clear what's happening. Uh, we're not going to do anything just yet. So if we want to read the data, there's also a couple different ways. You could get a specific, you could pass in a specific ID. So let's say we knew this ID, uh, we want to get this specific object, you could use get doc. But in this scenario, since we just are adding a bunch of IDs, we don't actually have reference to that ID locally in our code yet. So we're just going to get all of the documents in this collection. So we're going to use, use the same user ref because we want to reference the same data the same table slash collection uh, and we want to query that whole table so that whole users table we want to query it and get all the docs and we have this as async await block so we want to wait for that response because it is going to be a promise uh, and then we're going to console log that snapshot so 
once we click that, you'll see that what we're logging is, isn't exactly what we need, but it's a step in the right direction. So we're going to click read data and we have this big JSON blob of stuff. So we have Firestore app database ID. So we can see it's actually returning the entire database object along with a bunch of other information about our database. And if we see this snapshot doc changes, this is actually what we're looking for. So we have two documents or two rows in our database, in our table, and that correlates with this object object. So there's two objects in this snapshot. And right now they're just showing as objects. So we actually have to loop through them and then read them individually. And the way we do that is uncommenting this out. So we have to go snapshot dot for each. And then what we're logging is the doc. And that's what these items are doc dot data. And that's a specific um, Firebase thing. And if we reload and click read data, we could then see now we have the actual objects that we can do with, it with whatever we want. We could store them locally, we could show them, we could loop through them in a list, um, but these are actually accessible versus if you were to just do snapshot dot underscore snapshot, it, it wouldn't work. So you have to loop through and then this doc dot data is the key part here. And so that's our first uh, video on Firestore and integrating it, adding data and reading data. There's a lot more around querying, collections, ordering things. And so we'll do that in another video. Um, but for reference, the Firebase documentation is pretty good as well. Um, a big thing to point out here is, like I said, version 9 and version 8 are very different. Um, you can see like how we import it in version 9 versus how we're importing it in version 8. And more specifically, if we were to scroll down, how we set a document. So let's that's setting a document. Let's do add doc. So add doc. We can see version eight. We're defining the database still, and then the collection is called cities or the collection or the table, and then we're adding this object. And then in version nine, it's a little shorter. Um, I think it's actually easier to read version eight. Um, but there's reasons why they did that and we're, it's kind of like nested objects. So we have our database that's being defined, the name of the collection or the table, and then we're going to add a doc to it with the object of Tokyo, name Tokyo Country Japan. And so in the next couple of lessons, we'll go a little bit more in depth of batch transactions, queries, uh, and different ways of updating data in our database.